is the talisman. I don't know if you saw me brew it. I don't know if I filmed a brew day or not. I don't know how far we got. It's a New England IPA, which is ironically cleared quite a lot. And uh, I think it's coming out of 6.2 or 6.5% ABV. And it went on tap earlier this week, maybe Wednesday, something like that. And when we put it on, we just moved the kegs around. So I pulled it through and I wanted to have a sample that day. But obviously, because I just moved the keg, it had spread that sediment bed out a little bit. So normally the first, you know, half a pint or so is just going to push that sediment out from the pickup tube in the keg. So I thought, I'll leave it. Anyway, I've come to work this morning and I've seen a few notifications from a couple of our customers saying that they think this is one of the best beers I've ever made. So I immediately, uh, when I down tools today, shot next door to get myself a sample, of course. And, well... I'm not disappointed at all. The hop charge for this baby was uh, 9 kilograms in a 500 litre batch which gave us around 18 grams per litre and 60% of that was dry hop. So we used Idaho 7, El Dorado and Talus. So Talus was a new one to me. and. I don't know whether this is um, a, t a taste note, a flavour note that I'm picking up from the Talus or a combination of the three, but it's really, really tangerine and orangey. Oh, it's light, it's refreshing, it's extremely well balanced. It's low a I IBU because the grain bill just consisted of pale malt. There were no other specialty malts in there whatsoever. And the hop charge was just a Whirlpool edition and then the dry hop edition. So any bitterness in this beer has come just from the Whirlpool edition, which I think contributed something like 26 IBUs, which if you think about that going in at 80 degrees C is quite a contribution. And then, of course, um, because I wanted it to be in the New England IPA style and juicy and not bitter, uh, it's got a relatively um, generous finishing gravity. I think it was 10, 14, maybe a little bit higher. I could be completely lying about this. I'm going off memory. I think it was quite high. And that really has just allowed the beer to kind of wash across the palate like a fruit juice it doesn't have any sharp kind of you know uh, the bite at the back of the jaw you know what you'd get from the effect of a, of a strong bitterness it's not sweet so that balance I believe is just about right I think I've nailed it simply by accident The carbonation in the glass is just right, in my opinion, for a craft beer. It's enough to bring the aroma out of the glass. It's enough to maintain a head, which is a, a beautiful head. And there's just a little bit streaming up from the uh, widget in the bottom of the glass. don't know if you've seen our Harrison's Brewery glasses, but they've got the robot fermenter on one side, Harrison's Brewery in the brew shed on the other, and then it's got a circular Harrison's Brewery logo lasered into the bottom, to create nucleation points for the beer to effervesce a little bit in the glass and maintain that head. So, yeah, anyway, more about the beer. Let's have a go on the aroma, because I didn't really um, spend too much time on that when I picked this beer up. Yeah, I'm definitely getting tangerine out of it. It's tangerine-y. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of stone fruit in there, but not a lot. It isn't, however citrusy in the terms of a grapefruit pithiness that you might get from Columbus or Chinook or even Citra. It's not got a catty note to it. If anything, it is like, you know, the e I don't know if you might have seen them, the easy peel tangerines and satsumas and the kind of things that you get in a supermarket. And they're kind of sweet, but flat, not acidic. You know, like some oranges can be quite acidic. It doesn't have that 
I'm talking about the flavour now, oh, not the aroma. But it's all, yeah, it's all built around, in my opinion, that tangerine orangey note, and oh, I'm blown away by it. I can't believe I've made it. Oh, it's a cracking beer. Unfortunately, for you boys and girls watching the video, it is not available in can on the website because all of this batch went into keg. However, we do have its big brother, little sister, Secret City. Now that is in can and available on the website. And this is the exact same recipe with the hop substitutions. So Secret City had Mosaic in there, Vic's Secret and El Dorado. This has got El Dorado, Talus and Idaho 7. Same grain bill, same mash temp, same boil time, same yeast, same fermentation profile, just different hops. In my opinion, this is a bit of a better beer, simply because it's a little bit more balanced. I don't know, maybe the combination of Mosaic and um, Vic Secret and the other beer had a higher combined alpha acid contribution than the hops that went into this beer, but this one sits a little bit softer for me. But either way, you can't get it unless you come to the brew shed. But, as I said, the cans are available on the website. We don't have any vacant on the website. Unfortunately, we're going to can that in the next couple of weeks. We've got loads of pock. We've got loads of blueberry. We've got pock is proof of concept, if, you, if you're new. Um, we've got loads of blueberry, wheat beer. We've got loads of stout. We've got loads of porter. And the porter is drinking right in the sweet spot at the minute. And then talking about uh, beers in general, I've recently placed an order with Five Points Brewing off the back of watching uh, Tricky Dick here, Dude's Brews. You'll all know who he is by now, I'm sure. But you search it in the search box at the top and you'll, you'll come across uh, Dude's Brews or Richard. And he is uh, one of the four amigos that produce the Hop Edition po podcast generally on a Saturday night and uh, yet yeah, all great viewing for you beer enthusiasts out there but recently uh, he's been talking about um, a video that uh, I forget the guy's name uh, craft beer channel Johnny Garrett I think it is um, did a collab or a homebrew using the recipe from Five Points Best Bitter now Five points best is actually, my, it is, you know, don't sit on the fence. It is my favourite bitter on cask. Now, it's not available anywhere locally for me, but a few times a year we'll get on a train and we'll go on a bit of a jolly, all for research purposes, and sometimes we may go to Leeds. And when we go to Leeds, we always frequent uh, White Locks Bar or Whitlock's Bar in Leeds Town Centre and they always have a five points beer on and most of the time it's five points best or XB or pale but either way or duper the five points best is the one that I go for because it is outstanding on cask so this week I placed an order with five points for some of their beers and you can only get their five points best in bottle strangely enough all of the other beers are available in can. So to make up the basket, I filled up with a mixed pack of cans and I got a box of Five Points Best as well shipped to the door. Now, I'm gonna have a go at doing a bit of a Five Points clone and we're gonna brew it and put it on the bar and see what we think. I opened a bottle of it last night and it wasn't exactly how I remember. And I think a lot of breweries might suffer this. So having that translation of a particular style of beer, cask for example, being moved into bottle or can. And of course, all of us brewers who, who have several packaging methods know that it completely changes the beer. If you're used to cask ales, as soon as you move on to keg, it's colder for a start. Um, but I always say you can warm it up, can't you, in your hand, so it's a good starting point. But 
the biggest thing for me is the fact that it's got that little touch of carbonation. Now, your pure real ale drinkers will go batty about it. You know, whatever. Expand your horizons. Okay, so this little bit of carbonation in the beer does two things. Firstly, it preserves the beer in the keg longer so you don't have to get through a cask in three days. But also, it just lifts that aroma from the glass. It lifts it through the foam and to your nose so you can pick up the aromas of the beer that you might not necessarily get from a flat, or they're not flat, but a cask conditioned ale, shall we say. So, I prefer um, cask beer. <laughs> I prefer cask for five points best bitter, should I say, because I don't think it needs that effervescence. It wants to be a smooth, creamy, kind of malty beverage. And that, that for me is the best way of serving that particular beer and that particular beer style. So when I ordered the beers from Five Points, they arrived in bottle crystal clear. So they're not bottle conditioned. They've obviously been pasteurized. Well, I'm, I'm guessing a bit too far. They've obviously been filtered and carbonated and then bottled. They may have been pasteurized for all I know, but it, who knows? Um, I'd hope that they hadn't been. But it came as a clear product without any sediment and it was slightly too carbonated for my opinion. So I might uh, go home and make another video today and talk about it a little bit more in detail. But it left me wanting a little bit. So my quest as of today is to find five points best on cask locally. But because I don't think that's going to happen in the next month or two, I'm going to be brewing a batch of it. So I'm going to be pretty much using the recipe that Richard shared on his video. I think it was a link to a um, brewer's friend file or something like that. And I don't know if it was his recipe or Johnny Garrett's or whatever, but um, I'm sure it was uh, Tricky's recipe. So we're going to use that. Making a few alterations, the yeast for a start. I'm going to use an English ale yeast, but I'm going to use one from WCH Labs um, called Old English. Simply because it was available from Brookhouse Hops, where I order a lot of my hops from. And it was available from them cheaper than it would have been available from WHC Labs, which... Hmm, a bit weird. And then also, I've never ordered a bag before. Got 10 kilos of Fuggles. So Fuggles is the big addition to that particular beverage. So that's going to go in there as well. But what I don't want this video to turn into a massive five points best video. It's definitely about the talisman and his baby sister, baby brother, big brother, I think it might be RABV, uh, Secret City, which you can buy and try. So when I make uh, the five points best in the future, I'll share the video with you and uh, I'll put the recipe up on my website as well. The recipe for this and any other beers that I've made in the interim will be up on the website at some point but just bear in mind as I've said we are going through a lot of kind of ball ache with uh, solicitors and conveyancing and banks and that kind of jazz. Now, I'll not bore you with the details but I also want to put an extension up on the house and I've had to have a meeting with the neighbours to do it and you know I've got an architect employed to design uh, the extension and He's ready to push the button on planning consent and get it fired in and we haven't even bought the bloody house yet. It's one of those things, so sometimes not everything gets done in uh, chronological order, which I'd like it to do. So we haven't got all the recipes on the website yet. Somebody's been crying out. Dave and Ali have sent me a message wanting the pills and the recipe. I promise I'll put it up as soon as I can. I promise actually don't know where it is. I don't know if it's on the machine upstairs or one at home. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's it. I think I'm going to wrap it up today because I'm starting to uh, waffle on a little bit. Maybe this is going to my head. Who knows? But it's been a good day today. It's been a good week. We've got a lot done. Not as many visi visi visios as I would have liked. But hopefully uh, there'll be more next week when we can start to have a little bit of fun and brew 
a brand new best bitter. Five points. What we're going to call it? Can't call it five points best, can we? Because obviously that's been done. And we are kind of ripping off their beer, aren't we? Even though they've made it publicly available via Johnny Garrett. And all my beer recipes are publicly available, so it's not like it's a trade secret, is it? I'm just making something that's in the public domain and then putting it on the bar and selling it. I'm not selling the recipe, I'm just selling the beer. What we're going to call it? Maybe we could call it. Oh, I don't know. I've thought of something really clever then for a moment about um, plagiarising a recipe and then it immediately went out my head. You do the legwork on that one. I'll have a look in the comments. Whoever's got the funniest suggestion for the beer name, I'll choose and we'll call it that. And then that will also prove to me that you watched the video all the way through because I've done this right at the end. And this is the end. So cheers, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.